I hope you're not staying up on that controversial video or topic. <laughs> it, probably, <laughs> so it probably is going to be controversial as well. <laughs> because you triggered me this morning, which brings us to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> because I saw your video this morning. Uh, I, I don't think there's a play in it right now because maybe it has some kind of music. I don't know whether music is copyrighted or not because that's why I don't want to really play it right now. But uh, can you, for the sake of the subscribers and listeners, repeat what you say about Martinelli? So I don't misquote you. <laughs> <laughs> I think along the along the lines of how I see Marnelli, right, is yeah. when he when he first came in, he was raw. No one didn't really expect much from him. He went up two, three levels very quickly, which means they kept him, and he saw again first time appearances. So we was all happy for that because it was like we've got this Brazilian kid. We've hardly spent any money on him to bring him into the club. And he looks like he could go all the way to the top. Sure. So you have patience with that because he's young. But as it's sort of been developing, the game hasn't developed at the level that I think it should be. And for me, ultimately, how I see sort of Marinelli is exactly how you've got here. He is very much a pace merchant, for sure. Like, I think Marnelli's football IQ is, is a cad. No, I'm not even going to say that because there's academy players who have got a higher football IQ than him. It's just not great. And ultimately, you're going to get players like that, right? Is they've got natural born assets, what they've been blessed with. And you make your career from it. So there's nothing wrong with it. But when I'm comparing him to other wingers in the Premier League and world football, what more can we really give him apart from the pace element of it? And yes, he's got a decent finish when he sort of does it from a reflex action. If he has time to think about what he wants to do, Marnelli's not a great finisher. He reminds me a lot of Theo Walcott. Rapid, fast. Quick, Theo Walker always looked good when he had zero time to think about it, when it was instinct. You put Theo Walker through on goal 20 yards out, bearing down on the goal, he missed. Now, I agree with you there, because if you look at the statistics and look at the eye test, against Aston Villa, right, Matanelli had time, he scored it. Against Man U, the, the goal that was allowed, he had time, he scored it. Anytime Matanelli has time on the ball, he actually scores more than when he doesn't have time. Now, on the flip side, if you call Martinelli a pace merchant, that's your opinion. I respect it, even though I disagree vehemently. So who are the wingers you think are not pace merchant that actually have a greater footballing IQ so we can compare them to Martinelli? So if we start with our own team, you, we've got Saka. And we we had that conversation on the, on the previous stream, right? Okay. Where okay. I said... Saka is what you call a very well-trained academy winger. He looks that okay. way. Everything he does is just efficient. He might not always be super pleasing on the eye. He's no Ronaldinho. Yeah. He's no Nani Ronaldo when they were younger. That's not his side of play. He's all about optimization and efficiency. So that's a, a player with football and IQ. Because Saka is not the quickest. I, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. Do you know why? Saka is a three. They're three trick pony merchant. You know it's going no, to do then, go in, inside, outside, and turn. Yeah, but you see, but, is more but, but unpredictable. But but that's what I mean. More predictable than than Saka. Yeah, but but that's what I mean, right? It, it depends how mm -hmm. you view it, right? It's, okay. All right. Many people. Now, you, I don't know what side of the argument you are on, right? But I remember when I was in school, a lot of people who just played football, they didn't really rate David Beckham, right? Because I don't rate at, him. at the time, you had a lot more sort of um, flamboyant wingers. You had your your JJ Cotchers. You had your Robert Perez, Perez. your Lundberg. Yeah, uh, Perez, Quaresma. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you had those type of flair players. But okay. what David Beckham, why his football IQ was so high is he knows, okay, 
I haven't got pace. So how do I have impact on the game with the tools that I have, right? And what Beckham used to do very, very, very well is not move, stand still, create his own space. When you've got when you've got the likes of um well, Beckham wasn't spectacular, he just had English height. He's, I don't read David Beckham as much as a lot of English people read the, just the crosses. He was no, but that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, in yeah. my generation, a lot of people yeah. didn't rate David Beckham. Okay. That's more so media. I'm talking about football fans, right? Yeah. But the older he got on, people started to appreciate maybe because he got the move to Real Madrid. But just the point I'm trying to make is when you say Sack is like a free trip pony, right? Yeah. You still got to understand that's a level of IQ using your strong skill sets to still be efficient. Okay, let's like, pause there. So, mm -hmm. what are the main traits of a winger? I, I think every winger should have at least a decent pace because you can't be a winger. A, not... I, it's evolved. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's you, that clear cut you, anymore. No, no, no matter how, how football is going to evolve, there's some basics to football. A winger should have decent pace. You can't be a winger and not have pace. But then, you, but then you, territory. But but then you you say that. But then again, it okay. comes down to football IQ and efficiency. Right. Sure. Now, because... even though you have pace, your decision making which which, which transfers to football IQ, right? It mm -hmm. now varies from player to player, but there is no winger that like when you hear winger, what comes to your head? Pace must be part of the first three thoughts that come to your head. Wingers must have pace. But then when you when you look at wingers right now, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't say Trossard is super quick. Okay. I wouldn't say Saka. Is super quick, you know. Okay. I, I um, like what you just said. I love what you just said, right? How come mm -hmm. majority of Arsenal fans are not comfortable with Trossard playing? They prefer Martinez playing over Trossard when we have big games. If Trossard, who is not super quick, who is supposed to be the better winger in your opinion, how come majority of the fans prefer a Martinez playing than Trossard? The chaos factor, like. That's what Mar that's what Marnelli gives you, just pure chaos. And fans like that, right? I give you a prime example. Okay. There's people who watch boxing who are casuals and they don't really enjoy watching when Floyd Mayweather used to fight because they don't like the fact he doesn't get hit. They don't like the fact it's not a bloodbath, that it's not getting yeah. knocked down, having to get people like to see chaos people like to see blood blitz and glory right so that's okay. why people preferred manny pacquiao they preferred ricky Hatton because they get hit and they hit back they go down they get back up people love that story and that narrative right so when you have someone at a real skill level right a lot of people shy away from that because it's not exciting everyone likes the shiny exciting thing so people like martinelli because of that raw pace People, and don't get me wrong, like when you're a fan and you pay good money and if you go into the Emirates, you're paying the most amount of money out of any club in world football to go and watch that game. So you want to be entertained. So there's certain things, okay. if, you're, if you're a casual, Trossard is not super pleasing on the eye if you're just a casual fan. If you okay, really I, 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 I'll push back on that, right? All the world... Mm -hmm. Player of the all the Ballon d'Or winners and greatest players in in world football, they're all pleasing on the eye. Ninety percent of them are pleasing on the eye, from Ronaldo to Messi to Zidane. Uh, any any attacking player that has won World Football of the Year, you have to be pleasing on the eye. You have to be aesthetically pleasing because football is efficiency plus entertainment melanged. No, I I I get that, but ultimately it still comes down to impact. So. So those players, but those players you mentioned, mm -hmm. Marnelli is never going to get to that level of any of those no, players. I, I'm using the I'm analogy not... because, you, because you said, like, Martinelli is pleasing on the eye for the chaos factor. But mm -hmm. the best players to have that factor too. They have the chaos factor. The I'm not saying he's on that trajectory. I'm not saying so. He's not a world-class player. I've said in my channel, he's a top player, not a world-class player. But I just disagree with the fact that you say just pays. That if he has, if he has no real estate to run into, is clueless, which is not true. If you watch the season, 
and what are you plays? Yes, using the space as, a, as an advantage, fair enough, but it's still a technical ability. I never rated uh, to work out. He is a brainless pace merchant. Just no brains, keeps running, one, one straight, doesn't have a sign, but Martinelli is different. Mm-hmm. Do you read do you do you read Vinicius Junior? I'm I'm not super wild on Vinicius Junior to be honest with you. So you think he's not a top player? I think I think he's a very good player, but when you're talking about my preference of okay. player, Win- he, of winger, of winger, that's not my style of winger that I enjoy. So okay. Name three typical style of wingers you like that you prefer, so I can understand what you mean better. Okay, so for me, in my time, the wingers that I enjoyed, um, who's my top wingers? So definitely Robert Perez. Okay. Um, I would definitely say Ronaldinho. Okay. And I would also say Robin. So all those fingers you just mentioned, were they quick? Yeah. So they that means quick. I'm correct. That, that means pace is part of it. You, you, pace, I just told pace, you. pace pace is part of it, right? Okay. So mm-hmm. you, you you got to understand what more that they've done. When Robin basically trademarked that cutting in from the right, bending the ball into the opposite side. He basically okay. trained like that. When did Robin master that act? At what age? I want to say probably about 24. No, I'd, I'd say 25, 26. It was when he, because he left Chelsea, he wasn't that refined. It was when he was at Bayern, he, he, he actually got to that level and he maintained. No, he, and, he, he, he tore Arsenal apart many times in that Chelsea jersey. Like, like I'm not saying so. He did that. Yeah. But you can't compare the Robin of Chelsea to the Robin of Bayern. The Robin of Bayern was the... But then I'll take summit. your point. I'll take your point. Whenever someone's at Chelsea, can we judge them the same? At that, no, at that Chelsea? Just... No, 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 no. At this Chelsea, is different. Let's be fair. Don't be trying to move the goalpost at that Chelsea. That time, Chelsea was the pick of their purse at that time. They had a solid team. There was Balak, mm. they, mm. there was drug, but that was a solid team. They were winning titles. Mm. That a solid team. Basically, what basically, saying, this is what I'm, this is what I'm trying to say, right? So uh, okay, I understand where your pushback comes because you're saying, Oh, but pace is the integral part of it, right? But this is so a winger, crucial, any winger. This this is the crucial difference, though, between those guys and Martinelli, right? Okay. When Marnelli is faced up against a good right back, right, who's also got I, pace. I, again, give, me, give me an example. Um, who's had him in his back pocket before? Joe Gomez has wrapped him up. Uh, no, no. He has taught Kawaka apart. Wan Basaka, one of Wamba. the best one, one on one. A defender, mm-hmm. this like this, this one when we played uh, against Man U, he tore him apart. I don't know, I don't know. No, even Man U fans, uh, even Man U fans admitted to that. I have a best, I have a very great friend with the Man U fans. Yeah, admitted yeah. that, yes, like, he tore him apart. But my 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 thing is this, right? Is yeah. if Marnelli is not got space in behind to run into. He's not as impactful on the team as those other wingers we mentioned, right? You've got. Remember, you've got... remember, remember the two, the 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 second goal we scored against Newcastle this season. Martinelli moved. He, he, that was on pace. That was movement and space awareness. That was on pace. I'm just you're going to check and watch the highlight right now. The second goal we scored against Newcastle. Kahavas mm-hmm. assist. Look at mm-hmm. what Martinelli did there. So I understand that. When he has real estate to run into, that's a great asset. Okay, so even when you look at that Newcastle thing, is how much times does he do that across the season is the point. It's nowhere well, let's near not forget. Let's not forget sometimes uh, Ateta is so regimented. He wants you to stay at a particular place and hold the, the space and hold the width because they try to play Saka on this side, Martin on this side. It was when he came back from Dubai, he has given the team a bit of freedom to move around to confuse defenders. Sometimes 
I think when you're a young player, you are there to the instructions of the manager to the T. Or like when you're an experienced player, you are going to adhere to the instructions of the manager, but sometimes you can you use your self-discretion uh, in game time to make certain mm -hmm. decisions. I think sometimes young players overly adhere to the manager's instructions. It's, no, I heard that. My thing is this, look, he's got time. He's, he's still 22, but his yep. game needs to start developing. And I, this is... It will. You just said it. Have you yeah. been impressed now, with this goal, season? Goal, goals and assists, no. But if I look at the influence on the team, I'm impressed. No, that's that's why he doesn't even... Majority of the games recently, he's not even making it to 90 minutes. He's been stinking up the place. Like, he no, hasn't no, been... No, 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 no. He has no, not I don't, I don't agree. Season. I don't agree to that. Now. Let's be fair, number yeah. one. No, I, I had this conversation with my with the other guy the other day. Like, people rave about... I'm trying, I'm pivoting a little bit. I'll go back to the topic. People rave about Declan Rice. I remember when Declan Rice came to the team. I didn't like... I like his defensive solidity, what he gives to us in the midfield. But offensively, driving the ball, he just gets on my damn nerve. He's always passing to Saka. Like, there's, there's the other side there. There's... there's uh, Kai goes into space. There's Martinelli. But for some reason, maybe because of his body shape and he's very right footed, he's always. Oh, if you go and watch our first 10 games, mm -hmm. I know we like to build the play with our six. And this is not part, this is just rice. He just likes to go Saka, Saka. He became too predictable, too pedestrian. I almost ripped into my seat, like, what is wrong with Declan Rice? Mm -hmm. Why are we going to Saka all the time? So sometimes. I think in the first 10 games, I'm not blaming Martinelli too much because he's playing with a new partner in Kai Havertz in the midfield or that side of the midfield. They have to build some understanding and chemistry. And these things can actually disrupt the rhythm of Kai Havertz and Martinelli at that time. So I understand it. But in the last few games, we've been scoring a lot of goals. Martinelli has been very integ integral to that. His movement, his running, is holding up the, 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 the play sometimes. It's fantastic. Now, does he need to stay improved? I agree, he needs to stay improved his game. Like you say, it's 22. But to call him just a pace merchant only, that's a little of a stretch. <laughs> he is. And, and what, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is, don't be surprised if the winger we get in can play on that side as well. Remember, I told okay. you that. Who is, your, who is on your mind that you want to get into replacement scenario? No, no, not that I'm going to say to get anyone to invite. You don't notice how the likes of Pet and Arteta is the hybrid version of Pet, right? They like to evolve their team every season. When, sure, when, definitely. When, when we look at it as fans, we go, oh, you just need to replace Jacker and get a striker. That's it. He went up so left field, popped up with Kai Havertz. No one wasn't talking about no Yuri and Timber, and it's worked, right? So sure. I think they look at the game two, three, four phases in advance from what we do as fans, right? So every Pax, fan was Pax, just, yeah. every fan was just saying we just need a replacement for Jacka, a striker, and maybe a backup for Thomas Pike. He's always gets injured. That's what everyone would have said. No one on earth would have expected a 60 plus million Kai Havertz. No one would, was in expecting a, a likes of a Yuri and Timber, right? But, so, you, don't, but you don't you don't rate Kai Havertz. You, you're kind of glowing for Kai Havertz tonight. No, 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 no. Because you, what, you, what you've got time, what you've got to understand is this, right? Yeah. You might not be my preference of player. But I'm never going to sit here and lie to you and say, oh, he's terrible, he's terrible. He's not terrible. He's got a very high football IQ. He's just not my preference of player. That's all it is. Okay, that's, fair. That's, I mean? that, that's very fair. That's very fair. Yeah, I get you. So, yeah. so it's like you've got, you've got two holding midfielders, Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira. There's yeah. going to be people on the side of the fence will go, Roy King's bear because he's a he's a leader, he's a captain, he never misses games, blah blah blah. blah. The shouts, yeah. The shout people yeah. like that. That's not my style of player. I prefer Patrick Vieira, who was more graceful moving across the ground, still breaking up play. He didn't need to do all of these two-foot uh challenges as much as Roy Keane. Why? Because he read the game. Sure. You know what I mean? So it's even like I remember um Maldini said before that 
I know I've had a bad game if my shorts are muddy. That means I had to do last yeah. ditch tackles. Tackling, right? yeah. So it's like, do you prefer John Terry type or do you prefer Rhea Ferdinand type? Right? They're both great defenders, but which is your preference? Mm. You're being gracious to John Terry. I don't think he's a great defender. He's just a long language hype defender. But I get it. Yeah, but when you, when you look at his body of work compared to people in his position, he's had a good career, right? So the point I'm basically trying to make is I'm not a Kai Havertz fan, but I could just appreciate him just from a footballing standpoint. He's the type of player you enjoy playing with, for me, versus watching, for me. Okay. So you think he's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye when you watch him? Yeah, it's just it's just he it's just his style of play. Like, you know, I didn't like um for example, I wasn't a big um Sylvan Woolthord fan. Like when I'm looking at the track records of strikers we've had, Wrighty, yeah. Anelka, Henry. Henry do you know what I mean then Will uh, Tor Davos Davosuka? Did you like Davosuka? Did you like that? He was okay. okay. He, he's definitely not in the top five of our strikers we've had for sure. Mm -hmm. But the point that's that's the point with Kai Havis is look, Poplin, fine. Personal preference, he's not my cup of tea. Mm, that's all. Okay, that's fine. That, and, that, that, that's fine. And then in terms of Marinelli is I in, instead of fabricating stuff, I just say what I personally see. Right? Is mm. but, but what, what you see, you're, what you see, is subjective. Like you kind of subjective. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, other people yeah. like yourself, you may feel no. What are you talking about? He offers way much more than just pace. But I think so. He offers more than pace. But the reason why I call him a pace merchant because all of his good work he's done this season. Is being because of the pace. It's nothing to do with skill. It's nothing to do with through balls. It's the simple fact that the right back is worried about that pace. So they go tight to they go tight to Marinetti. So so that, that was, I agree with you, right? Yeah, a lot of quick players in the Premier League, right? That can't do what Martinelli does with pace. Carrying the ball at that speed is a different kind of skill set, beating like uh Wambasaka, who is actually quick. Kawaka is actually quick, he's on that skill set. So it's not just pace because Chiwoka had pace, he was horrible. Because if Chiwoka uh, was attacking a defender that had pace, it was toothless. But Masanelli can actually attack a defender that has pace and still beat him. So that's why I come and say, no, it's not just a pace merchant. Yes, he uses his pace to an advantage, but the skill set and its technique to that pace for it to be effective. You can't just have pace and run. Okay, uh, what about the guy that was with Man U? Daniel James, or what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Welsh guy. Well, he, he had pace, but if he met a good defender with pace, he was clueless. Unlike mm -hmm. Martinelli, he can meet a defender with pace and see beat him. So that's the difference. That's why I'm like, no. I think pace we dominate, doesn't we dominate the ball. We dominate the ball better than Man United will allows for our. But a one-on-one, a one-on-one -on -one, on -one is different. Is not about domination. When it goes one-on-one with Kawaka, one-on-one with uh, Mbasaka, I get that. Just, sure. just, 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 just for me, I've played with wingers like Marnelli and they're rapid, but a lot of it is head down. And I'll challenge anyone who watches this video, yeah. go and watch Marnelli and see how much times he's moving across the ground and he's actually looking up. They're all oh. the telltale signs. <laughs> oh, of... so you, you, you don't like him looking down? People have different ways of doing things, right? I, I might not like someone that likes to eat your sandwich or eat your loaf. No, but my it friend, if you're, playing, if you're playing at the elite level, if you're playing at the yeah. elite level of football, and I'm a winger, yeah. right? Yeah. I heard that from academy level, the coach saying, get your head up, get your head up, get your head up, right? Watch Martinelli play. He's literally like that, that kid in school. I know I'm quicker than you. I'm knocking the ball and I'm running, right? Like, yeah. watch, watch him. That head I, is, is it, always is it, down. Is it, he always takes his head off to make the final decision of whether to cut it in or to stop. I understand what you're saying, but it has his running pattern. He still leaves his head off. He's not always all the way to the ground. Come on. I understand. You, you cannot control 
your running pattern. That's who you are. No, you, the final ball and you, delivery. You, 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 you definitely can because Henri was very much the same when he first, first came to Arsenal. It was a lot of dependence on speed and he was a head down. And as, uh, as he got developed through coaching, training, he did develop a different, whole different type of running style. If you know okay, it, when he first even though, okay, even though I don't agree with what you're saying, but okay, by that logic, let's say because Matan is 22, maybe at 25, his head might be upper than how you could get up. The that's way fine, oh, that's, that's fine. But if it takes you to get to 25 to get to that stage, you're gonna be a squad player. <laughs> I'm telling no, 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 tell no. you, no, because Henri, how, right old, now, don't how, be how old, okay, I'm don't be surprised finish. right now, right? I'm telling yeah. you, don't be surprised. If next season Martinelli yeah. finds himself on the bench, I haven't got a name for you, but I think yeah, if, I don't think so. If our manager is gonna adjust so. something in that team, yeah. I reckon it's gonna come in that front line. Now everyone's screaming mm -hmm. out thinking we're gonna get a striker. Striker, I don't think so. okay. I think we're gonna get a player who's versatile enough to transcend two, three different positions in the attacking play. Yeah, I, I don't I, okay. Think... I, I accept that. I accept that, but I don't think it's Martinelli. I think uh, Martinelli is very valuable to that squad and the starting eleven. He's, he's uh, valuable. I'm not. Ter I'm not tearing him down. I just. I'm just saying we've just got to be mindful. Well, yeah, of... You need that not complimenting you... him. <laughs> not can, complimenting can you? Him. Can you? Can no. I, I appreciate the chaos factor, and okay. he's a great type of player you want in the game against Manchester City, right? Because yeah. I've just made a video about that in terms of how Kai Havertz tends to occupy the right centre back and the right back by standing in open space, so they get drawn to him. That's the perfect sure. game. That's the perfect game. What you want to just have someone rapid, right? You want someone to just drop a ball in behind the right yeah. back, and you want someone like Arnelli to run. Mm -hmm. So he has look. I'm not saying Marnelli is terrible. I'm just saying right now the game is too dependent on pace. And I think he has all of the natural God gift talent to be elite if he could develop his game a lot more. I think he would develop the game a lot more. He's 22, as I said. And uh, for me, at 22, he's doing well. And I, I expect more from Martinelli. Like you said, he might get replaced, but I think even though if you get an, an attacking alternative, he won't come to replace Martinelli. I think Martinelli will actually still fight for his place. I, I like him. I prepare him to Saka. I know the hype is around Saka all the time. I think he's the X Factor more than Saka. Because like I said, Saka is a three-trick pony. You know, going, go out, cross, 